Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is still Wednesday, July the 1st, and it's 524 p.m. I wanted to share a very brief little uh, word from the Lord and how it pertains to what we've heard in the last couple days. This is from uh, the email I get from Dawn, and it's the one from Marsha Burns that she calls Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. He says, Stay calm and keep your wits about you when everything around you seems to be unstable and uncertain. Do not forget that I am the place of safety that you can run to, a place where you can access direction, guidance, and wisdom. I will surround you with a hedge of protection and keep you as the apple of my eye. The verse she puts with this is Psalm 17 verses 8 through 9. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me from my deadly enemies who surround me. Okay, so the reason I wanted to share that, if, if you haven't uh, seen the videos I shared, um, let me pull this up, and I'll tell you the ones. The dreams from, uh, let's start with the dreams from the pastor, Pastor Dana, that I shared yesterday. Um, and it's called Sharing a Dream that May Pertain to You in Some Way and a video of a pastor's three prophetic dreams. The first dream was about March, April, May, and I think June. I'm not sure how far it went, but it, all that has come to pass. Everything he saw in his dream came to pass. Then his Second dream took us to November where he saw the fist hit November and it seemed like everything fell apart. Okay, how much of that we see, we don't know. But then watch woman's, uh, oh, is it a vision or a dream? I think it was a dream uh, that I put up today. I believe it was today. Yes, two hours ago, um, talked about the Lord saying that we will see something that, I can't remember how it was worded, but it was like what I was saying in one of these videos about how I was saying, Lord, I, I thought we'd be gone by now. I didn't think we'd be seeing all this. You know, it'll be something else like that. That I, you know, I would think, we should. why are we seeing this? You know, why is this going on and we're still here? Well, this little bitty word from the Lord tells it right there. Trust in Him. And also remember Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Okay, that verse there alone, I had memorized it. And some of you may remember this story, and some of you are new and haven't heard it. My second husband and I used to do a lot of camping. And somehow, we got to go camping without any of the kids. He had two boys. I had two girls. So we normally had four children with us. Well, this particular time, I'm thankful we didn't have them. Because a tornado blew up. We didn't know bad weather was coming our way. We normally checked the weather. He was uh, trained to be a survivalist. He would do that kind of thing. But this somehow blew up. The park rangers went around getting everybody out, especially the tent campers. And they wanted everybody down at the hotel on the first floor. 
but they missed us. Well, God had reason for that. He let them just probably we turned invisible to this guy. I don't know how else he could have missed us. Anyway, during the night, it starts raining really, really hard. And water was coming under our tent, on them good old-fashioned canvas Coleman tents. Great big one we had. And the water was rushing underneath and lifting it up, lifting us up. And the wind was just howling. And one pole fell, and my husband went out, and he fixed that one pole, came in drenched. And through all that, that roof never leaked. We never got wet except him for going out but because he wanted to make the tent more stable. And he did it in a quick hurry. Well, in the morning, the park ranger comes around to see the kind of damage that was left. And he found us up there and he said, he was like, I can't believe y'all are here. I can't believe we missed you. And he was just like in shock. He said, a tornado came through this park last night and touched down about a mile from here. I can't believe your tent is still up. And we told him what happened and how the water came through, you know, but only one pole fell. And But you know what? The whole time, once I woke up and was here in the storm and the rain, I started saying, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. All I could do, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. That's all I could remember. I couldn't even, I couldn't even pray in the spirit. I couldn't pray in English. I couldn't, that's all I could do is just trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths over and over and over and over and over through the whole thing. To Roy going out, fixing the tent, coming back in and he stripped and got in his sleeping bag just, uh, you know, which was nice and dry <laughs> and oh man it was it was scary I was scared but I trusted in the Lord I I I probably could have done better but I, I wasn't where I'm at now I wasn't there yet you know I was saved I had been baptized in the Holy Spirit but I hadn't grown because I was going to a Baptist church. And the churches I had been to before just didn't feed me right. <laughs> and I was reading the Bible, but still, I didn't know to ask the Holy Spirit to help me understand it and things like that. So when you pray, your, you open your Bible. Before you open your Bible, you pray, Holy Spirit, help me to understand what I read and help me to get out of it what you want to teach me. See, if I had known to do that, I would have started picking up stuff on my own because the Word says you have no need for any man to teach you. And it's because we have the Holy Spirit. And you know, I, I've been put in a very awkward situation that um, this very nice lady who took me to the doctor, the vet, and then we went and picked up that Jasper, and she has to take me back to get the stitches out, wants to come down every Sunday to hear her pastor on online. And um, I don't want to make a commitment. That I can't keep every week. I, I want to buy her a little tablet that I can record on. Is that, I don't know. I asked her to please call and tell me the name of her church so I can find out what kind of service they have and if they have a YouTube channel. If they don't, if all they do is record live and they don't have an archive where I can upload it onto the tablet 
for her every week, then I can't do that. But they are cheap enough that I could. And her help means that much to me. She would insist on taking me and not let me pay her. So it would be my way of paying her for gas and trouble. Because the lady I had helping me with Buddy, I paid her $25 to drop him off and then go pick him up. That was what she charged. And I thought that was fair. That, that's about right. Time to take him and then go pick him up. So, see, two trips with her is 50 bucks, And a fire, Kindle Fire 7 is $49.99. So, that's two trips right there. I would have paid to this other lady that I was hiring. So anyway, um, I'm hoping that her church has an archive or I can record it while it's going on. I don't really want to hear an angered preacher. Do y'all blame me? But is that unchristian like to not want to hear an Anglican preacher for an hour? What would you do? I mean, Jesus said, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, I don't know that I would expect anybody to allow me to do that. You know what I mean? It's a conundrum. It really is. It's a conundrum. And we're... Who you help, people asking for money that won't even give me their name. I mean, I turned them down, and it's just too. I want to help Morella, and anybody else that can help me help Morella, I'll be sending her. I have a little bit that someone else is put up a video for, but they're putting the money in my PayPal. So I have a little bit to send, and I'll have a little bit to add, I think. But I do want to help this lady that's helping me. She's helping me, so I want to help her. I think it's only right. But then I want to help Morella, too. So if anybody can help me help Morella, that would be really great. I'll put my PayPal account in the description box. So if you have any extra, could you pitch in a little? That would be wonderful. So I'm going to end this here. Um, I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection. And myself and my computer and each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections as well. Y'all stay safe. Remember, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Remember the scriptures I talked about. Maybe you might want to write down flashcards and hang them up on your mirrors. Remember, the Lord is in control. Perfect love casts out fear. That's another one. You can look up scriptures about fear. So they'll help you to not fear. It's human nature. When something's happening around you right at the moment to start fearing. But now I think I would just lay there and say, Jesus, I know you've got this. I know the angels are around us. And I know I've got or covered under the shelter, the shadow of your wings. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for protecting. See, I would do that now. I think. I hope I would. I feel like I would. Anyway, I'll end it with that. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.